Multiplay 3.0 Tutorial 3 Adding Audio Cues. So we're going to show you how to add audio cues to your cue list. First of all, select where you would like the cue to go. The cue is going to go right after the cue that you selected. So if I choose uh, Discovering Daniel Prey, my cue number 12, it's going to put the cue right after that. Now I have two choices as far as audio cues. I can put in an empty placeholder if I know I want some kind of an audio file in here, but I don't quite have the audio file ready yet, I can just put an empty placeholder in there. But I know what file I want to put in, so I'm going to insert audio cue. Just click on that. Uh, it will take me to the folder that I last was selecting audio cues from. So I can pull them or I can navigate somewhere else if I want to. And let's say I'm going to put in my wedding sequence wave here and say open. Now the wedding sequence, it gets inserted there. Now I'm going to double click it just to show you a couple choices here. Double click it and again we could put a, a Q number here, uh, 12A, we could put after there, script reference, whatever. But we're going to go to the audio tab here. So we can set the volume for this, we can set the pan left or right, we can set the rate of playback. This one affects tempo without changing pitch, this one affects pitch without changing the tempo of the song. Start position, where it's going to start from. Currently we're starting from the beginning and then we can see here that the audio selection is 2 minutes, 6 seconds and 440 milliseconds long. But we can choose to start it at a different start position and we can stop it at a different stop position there. If you have a particular audio selection that has the audio starts a little bit late and the beginning has no audio but just silence, you can find where the audio track actually starts by using this tool. I've told it to search for uh, a signal of at least minus 20 decibels and the start and see what it did. It went to 144 milliseconds, so it's pretty close to the beginning of the file. But if you happen to have a file that has a lot of silence before it starts, it will find that for you. And you can set this sensitivity. I believe it defaults at minus 10 decibels, but I set it to minus 20. Another thing that you want to do is make sure you have your audio output selected whether it's audio output one or audio output two. So where we're outputting this to. You can select a start and stop position and then the loop between those two start and stop positions. And then you can also select if you want to fade in at the beginning of this and how long the fade in would be. And then the fade out and whether it's going to be an end fade on there. Now if you are looping, you can use a control command which we're going to discuss in a later tutorial to exit out of the loop. So you can say something like six loops and the, the audio file can be looping between the start position and stop position and then you can send that control cue that says okay they finished moving the set piece on the stage we can get out and then finish this audio file. So you can use a control command to exit that loop structure. So that's how you would do that. Now we can also preview this cue to hear what it sounds like. Okay, which gives you an idea and you can kind of set the volume control up on there. Um, kind of a unique point here that is very, very useful for rehearsals and that is cue points. So if you go to the cue points tab, you can preview the audio file and then stop and start it at various points and add those as cue points and they will appear up here. So at rehearsal, if there's a specific spot in this particular audio cue that you want to be able to jump to in rehearsal and know that it's going to be right there without having to write it down on a list on a piece of paper like uh, we always have to start at 1 minute and 20 seconds in where John sings this particular line. And that's where we're going to be doing that a lot in rehearsal. You can actually set cue points here. So I can be listening in my preview mode. And say pause there and say add this cue point. And it's going to set that for me at 9.77 seconds. And then I can label this whatever I want to call it. Wedding one. And then I can resume down here.
pause again, add another cue point there, so that's at 19.92. So you get the idea, then you can add cue points. There we go. So you can set these cue points, and they become very helpful during rehearsals, like simply click accept. And you'll notice now that up here I have some cue points set. Now, when you're playing back something, so say we're in rehearsal and I'm going to play back this cue. In my common here, it's start advanced, so it is going to jump to the next cue when I start this in rehearsal. But watch what you do. We're going to start the cue. Now I'm going to go back here and notice that up here, all of this is active. I can directly edit this sound file right now and adjust the volume or I can jump to cue points that I've set in rehearsal. As long as I have it selected, even though it's playing back, I can use these tools up here and change pan, change rate, change volume, jump to cue points, a slide around in here, uh, pause, restart, that kind of thing. So it becomes very, very helpful during rehearsal to do that. So again, you fire the cue, then just go back and select it again. You can see that it's, re uh, it's running and showing position here. I can pause, resume. I can jump to a cue point. I can jump to this cue point and start from there. Get the idea. So that's how you would do that. And that becomes very, very handy during rehearsal. This box up here or this tool will only be active if you select a direct edit. And it's kind of hidden a little bit. Let me show you where that direct edit is. Go back to your preferences menu up here and go to layouts and layouts. I'm in my default layout here and you see this box here, DE, that stands for direct edit. If I put a check mark in there, that means that this box will be active and usable. All right, so say I'm playing back my cue. I'm going to select it. So my box is active. I can change the volume level. That will automatically be saved to that cue because I am in direct edit mode. So it's a great way during rehearsal to go and set your volume levels in case some of your audio cues are different volume levels, so you don't have to worry about your person on your mixer adjusting the volume level. But again, you have to be in direct edit mode. And then default layout 2, as you can tell from the preferences here, direct edit is not turned on. So that prevents the person from actually running the show from actually accidentally editing any of these qualities to the audio file.